Welcome to the Church of Thomas, Nature of Jesus, 6-15-08. In my surfing the web and collecting pamphlets from other groups, I have found that we in the Church of Thomas are not alone in our view of the nature of Jesus. Nature of Jesus. As a kid, I just took it on faith that we were the only ones who saw Jesus as an angel of God. We see him as the highest angel and messenger of God. He and his twin, the Holy Holy Spirit, are in charge of us. We do not believe uh, that God, the God we worship, could possibly fit into a person no matter how wonderful. We also believe it is self-centered to think that God would abandon the universe to live 33 or so years on earth. We do believe that Jesus' authority comes from God. We also reject the idea that Jesus only appeared to be in a human body. We feel that Jesus not only lived, grew up, loved, and suffered here, but he died to be the ultimate blood sacrifice to allow our sins to be forgiven. He came to this world to be the ultimate scapegoat. In the old days, it was not sheep that was the first choice for a religious sacrifice in the Jewish religion. It was a perfect male goat. They would adorn this animal with garlands, then tie and pin written down sins to its body. The weight could be quite hefty. This was because unlike a ram sacrifice that was for individual sins, a scapegoat carried the sins of an entire village. When the sins were attached, they drove the animal out into the desert to die. There was no quick, untraumatic death for him. It was slow torture. We believe that the slow torture and suffering of Jesus was meant to mirror this sacrifice as a symbol of forgiving the sins of the global village. We know that Jesus had brothers. It's in the New Testament. We learned that he was a messenger of God as a boy. The brother that was born with him as a fraternal twin was Judas, later called Didymus and Thomas. Both of these names mean twin in Aramaic and Greek. We know that he had students that included women. Mary of Magdala was high-born of the house of Benjamin, unlike the redaction that tried to discredit her as being the woman who was possessed by demons or the other woman who was a prostitute. Jesus did not draw the line between men and women that most of his students drew. Mary of Magdala helped finance Jesus' ministry. Unlike most of the men who were his students, uh, she had resources. They had no resources to contribute being farmers and fishermen. We understand the formation of Islam in some ways to be a reaction to the division of God into in, as indivisible into a pantheon of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also do not believe that there are aspects of God represented by more than the one. Jesus as an angel and messenger of God. Reconcile our Gospel of Thomas, verse 13. Jesus asked his students, Whom do I remind you of? Who do you think I am? Peter said to him, though he recounted later because of pressure from John, I see you are a righteous angel. Matthew said, You are a wise philosopher. Thomas said, You are my master. More I am not able to say. Jesus acknowledged their answers. I am all that you say and more, but I am not your master, but servant, like you will become when you fully know the one. Because you have freely consumed my knowledge, you have become drunk with the bubbling spring, which I have shared. I share what you can understand at this time. Taking Thomas with him, Jesus walked a little ways off, telling Thomas three things. Jesus stayed to pray. Thomas, re returning to the other students, was asked, What secrets did Jesus share with you? Thomas said, If I share even one thing with you, you will want to stone me to death for blasphemy. The stones would then turn on you, burning and consuming you in the flames. The Jehovah's Witnesses also see Jesus as the highest angel. Uh, the reference I would use is in the Awake publication dated April 22, 2005. Is discussed in great detail. The pages are five through nine specifically. The Jews are also uh, that are also Christians also see Jesus 
as the highest angel. They call him the Metatron of God. The link page uh, has a link to this reference site. Unlike in many Christian denominations, we feel that men and women are equal in the eyes of God. This includes righteousness as well as sin. Jesus did not elevate one above the other. Why should we? The people of Islam believe that both Adam and Eve shared equally in the first sin. Among the Jewish people, there is a quote from the Talmud. Um, it's titled, A Woman. This is uh, a written in the Hebrew Talmud, the book where all the sayings and preachings of the rabbis are conserved over time. It says, be very careful if you make a woman cry, because God counts her tears. The woman came out of a man's rib, not from his feet to be walked on, not from his head to be superior, but from his side to be equal, under the arm to be protected, and next to the heart to be loved. God is seen as one and not three. Reconcile our Gospel of Thomas, verse 30. Jesus said, Where there is a trinity of gods, there is a human fabrication. Where the one holds all, there I am, as a child as well as a beloved servant. In Islam, God is not divided into three segments, but is one God. To the Jehovah Witnesses, God is not represented by a trinity either. Uh, the reference is awake. Uh, publication uh, April 22nd, 2005. The specific pages are pages 6 and 7. God bless the whole world. No exceptions. Angel Eliza.